Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave from Evil Eye Games. In today's video, we're going to start setting up our character so that we have a representation of the player in the game. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need the animation starter pack. So in case you haven't done that before, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get it. So from our Unreal Launcher here, over to the left, we're going to click on the Marketplace tab. Now, I already have it open here, but if we go back the home and at the top here, we can click on the search content button. We can search for the animation starter pack. And we can go ahead and click on the animation starter pack. And you're going to see two options as of right now in here. But the one we're looking at is the animation starter pack from Epic Games with the big free tag on it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now, right now I have an add to project here, but you're going to see a button that says add to cart. You're going to have to add to cart and check out, but keep in mind that it is free. So it's going to cost you $0. So once you've clicked on the add to cart and you have the project added, you should see this add to project button. And I'm going to go ahead and click on the add to project button. And it's going to give you a list of all the projects that you have. So I'm going to select our third person shooter tutorial and click on the add to project button. Now, if you haven't downloaded it yet, you're probably going to have to wait for it to download the files from Epic before you get this add to project button back again. Once that completes, we're going to head back over to the library and I'm going to go ahead and double click and open up our third person shooter tutorial again. Now, once your project has completed loading again, you're going to see in the content folder to the left here that we have an Anim starter pack. And inside of here, we're going to have a whole bunch of animations, as well as a couple of blend spaces, a character and an Anim blueprint, as well as a map to showcase the animations. And I'm just going to leave that as is. We're going to end up creating our own character so that we can make it work for our needs. That and the character that comes with a pack is very, very basic. So we're going to go ahead and go over to our blueprints folder here. We're going to go into characters and I'm going to go ahead and right click and create a basic blueprint class. And at the top here, we're going to have our common classes and we're going to end up creating a character. Now, the one thing that people might ask at this point is what's the difference between something like a pawn and a character, because both of these classes can be controlled by a player. The difference is a character is a specialized form of the pawn. Pretty much a pawn is the most basic version of something that can be controlled by a player. And a character is designed to represent a humanoid type character. And the character also comes with a couple of added features that the pawn doesn't come with. In particular, it's going to come with a collision capsule and it's going to come with a movement component. And we're going to utilize that movement component and the collision capsule. So that'll make it good for us to create a humanoid type character. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that character button. It's going to create a new blueprint down here in our content browser. So I'm going to name this BP underscore TPS underscore player character just hit enter when I'm done and it's going to have a little star next to the icon that's going to indicate that we have something that hasn't been saved yet so I'm going to go ahead and click on the save all button and when it prompts I'm going to go ahead and hit the save selected button so now that we've gone ahead and we've created our blueprint I'm going to go ahead and double click and open it up now yours might open up in a separate window but I like to merge mine with the main window. So you can just click and hold on the tab and drag and drop it into the bar at the top here. And the first thing we're gonna take a look at here is to the left we have a components list. And if you're not familiar with components, components are basically separate chunks of code that are designed to be added to classes. So in this case, our character comes with a capsule component. If we left click on that, you'll notice this pill thing highlights 
and the capsule component is going to be responsible for most of our collision. So it's going to prevent our character from falling through the floor or walking through walls. Right below that, we have an arrow component. And the arrow component is basically just a indicator to us, the game designer, to know which direction the front of the character is. So that arrow points the direction that the character is pointing. Lastly, we have a mesh component here. And I shouldn't say lastly, because we have one more thing to touch on. And the mesh is going to be the representation of the character. And in case you've never heard the term mesh before, in game terminology, it's basically another word for a 3D model. So when you hear mesh, all you have to do is understand that that is a 3D model. And right below that, we have our actual last component, and that's gonna be the character movement. And we're gonna take advantage of this. This is what's going to propel our character around the map and decide how the character actually moves. So to begin with, we're gonna go ahead and select the mesh component. And we wanna give our character some physical presence in the world that we can see. So to the right in the details pane here, I'm gonna go ahead and under mesh, where it says skeletal mesh, we're gonna click on the drop down where none is, and we're gonna select the SK underscore mannequin. And that's gonna be the mannequin model that comes with the animation starter set. And you're gonna notice that his feet start off at the center of the capsule. So we're gonna to need to go ahead and fix that. So we can go ahead and the first manipulator that comes up here, the three little green arrows or the three little multicolored arrows here is going to be the translate movement. And if you want to go ahead and move around this window, you can click and hold the right mouse button to pan the camera around. And you can use the W, A, S, and D keys to maneuver around inside of the area. And you can also use the arrow keys in lieu of the W, A, S, and D keys. So I want to grab the top manipulator here, the blue arrow, and I wanna lower him down so that his feet come just to the bottom of this capsule. So you can go ahead and click up or down. Now by default, the editor will move the mesh in certain number of steps. Now I have it set to one right now, so every time I move him up and down, he moves by one centimeter. If you're just opening it up for the first time, you're probably gonna see that it's gonna move in steps of 10. If you wanna change that up to the top right here, next to where the little grid icon is, there is a number. More than likely, yours is gonna be 10. And this is gonna dictate how many units the manipulator will move whatever you're manipulating. So if you want a more exact number, you can set it to one or a more precise setting, you can set it to one. Whereas if you want to move it larger leaps, you can set it to 50 or 100 or any one of these other numbers. So I'm going to keep dragging this character down right until he gets to the bottom. We want this center dot to be where the lines for the capsule merge at the bottom. And that seems to be the case at negative 88. So the next thing we want to go ahead and do is we want to align our character's mesh with the direction of the character. We have this arrow component here that's pointing to his left, our right, and we want the mesh to face the same direction. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rotate the mesh. And at the top here, we have these three icons that are going to define what the manipulator does. The first one is translating or moving something in 3D space. The second one is rotation. And the third one is scaling. So I'm going to click on the second one that says selected rotate objects. And we're going to get a different manipulator on our mesh. So we can just click and drag the blue arc right here and rotate them 90 degrees so that our character faces down the arrow. So we have our character mesh in the correct position and facing the right direction. Now we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add a way for the player to view the game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a camera to the character, but we also wanna 
way to keep the camera at a specific distance from our character. So in order to do that, with our mesh selected here, and actually, you know what, I'm gonna attach this to the capsule component. So I'm gonna left click on the capsule component. And one thing to keep in mind is when you add components, when you click on the add component button and add it, it is going to make it a child of whatever selection you have in the component list here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a component and I'm gonna search for a spring arm. And I'm gonna select spring arm. And we're gonna have this red line that ends up poking out of the back of our character here. And we're gonna to wanna to translate this up. So we can either select one of these icons at the top here, or if you wanna quickly cycle through the different manipulator options, you can hit the space bar. And we'll just have to click on it here in the screen in order to get it. But once you have it selected within your viewport, if you hit the space bar, you can go ahead and cycle through the translate, scale, and rotate objects. So we wanna bring it back to the three arrows to translate it. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up right about, let's say 55, right in the middle of the chest here. And we're gonna see that this pokes out of the back of the character here, and it extends backwards. And we're gonna to wanna to mount our camera to the end of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and in our components menu here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on add component with our spring arm selected. And we're gonna search for a camera. And we wanna use just the camera, not the Cine camera. So I'll select that and it'll go ahead and attach the camera to the end of our boom arm. And you can go ahead and name it if you want, but I'll just leave it as is. So at this point we have a camera that directly trails our character. So let's go ahead and hit compile and save. And we want to make sure our character is spawned into the game. So if we go back to our main window here, in our blueprints folder, I'm going to go to our game files and we have our third person shooter game mode. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. So underneath classes here, we see one option for the default pawn class. And that's the option we want to change. So under default pawn, we're gonna go ahead and select our third person shooter player character. And we can go ahead and hit compile and save. And we can test this out by going to the main window. And you're gonna notice in the default map that we created here, there's this little controller icon with the flag. And this right here is the player start. So this is gonna dictate where when the player's character is spawned into the game, where it's going to be spawned and the direction it's going to be facing. So if we maneuver around here, we can see there's obviously an arrow component sticking out the front of it. And our character is going to be spawned within this capsule. So let's test it out. At the top here, we're going to go ahead and hit the play button. And we have a camera directly behind our character and he's standing in a default A pose, but our character is now spawned into the world and we're viewing the camera through the camera that is attached to our character. Now, at this point, if we try to click around or press any buttons, our character isn't gonna do anything yet. And that's because we're gonna to have to go ahead and set up some inputs. So in the next video, we're gonna set up some inputs and start moving our character. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and leave them down below. I'm also going to leave a link to my Facebook page. So if you guys want to follow me or like me over there, you can go ahead and do that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.